is up you guys welcome back to another one if you're new to the channel i am gold penny i do new car truck suv reviews on youtube and today we are in the brand new 2024 mercedes-benz glc 300 courtesy of mercedes-benz of hagerstown in hagerstown maryland for more information on their inventory please feel free to check out the link in the description box below so today we are in this one because i personally love the exterior styling i do love the interior ambient lighting that i first found on this one as well because it's kind of a dark day today and this ambient lighting is just vibrant and so if you're curious, the GLC is going to be competing with the BMW X3 and Genesis GV70. So ultimately in this video, we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking, steering feel, ride quality, sound system, exhaust clip, all that fun stuff. So having said all of that, what do you guys say? Let's just go ahead and jump right into it. And as always, let's start with pricing. And so as you can imagine, there are a couple different configurations for the GLC 300. First one is going to be the rear wheel drive configuration starting at $47,100. Then there is the formatic all wheel drive going for $49,450. But regardless of the configuration that you go with, the power plant is going to be the same. Powering the Beast is a two liter turbocharged inline four cylinder with a mild hybrid system, putting out 255 horsepower at 5,800 RPM, 295 pound feet of torque coming in at 2,000 RPM, Power being sent to rear wheels or all wheels through a nine speed automatic with paddle shifters. Zero to 60 time coming in at approximately 6.2 seconds. That's plenty respectable. With MPG numbers coming in at 22 in the city, 27 on the highway, taking premium unleaded fuel. And so before we do any kind of fun paddle shifter or acceleration test here in the GLC, I wanted to mention to you guys the drive modes. It's labeled dynamic. It's actually located just underneath of that massive infotainment screen, which we'll be getting to later in the video, of course. But drive modes will include off-road, eco, comfort, sport, and individual. Adjusting things like the shift points, the throttle response, the steering sensitivity, and the all-wheel drive system engagement then as well. So now having got all of that out of the way, what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and find a straightaway. Let's put the paddle shifters and acceleration here to the test at the same time. I want to see how quickly the paddle shifters are going to react for us, and let's also see how quickly we can get this one here up to speed. All right, you guys, in three, two, one, go! Yep, baby. There it is. That is not bad at all, man. And I love that it has a mild hybrid system too because it kind of eliminates all of the turbo lag that you traditionally do find in turbocharged four-cylinder engines. So definitely a big fan of that. So that was just the acceleration actually. I forgot to do the paddle shifter. So let's do that one more time. I'm gonna go ahead and pull over real quick and let's find yet another straightaway and let's see how quickly these paddle shifters are going to react for us here. All right, out on the road, let's go. Yeah, there's a slight delay, but they're not bad. They have a really nice feel to them as well. So a lot of times when you hit paddle shifters, they don't actually feel as high quality as these actually are. So I'm a big fan of the way they feel, but there is a slight delay to them. Mercedes does do better in uh, more of their performance oriented cars. This is just an SUV after all, but they're not bad. And you can also use paddle shifters to do a little bit of engine braking as well. So if it were to be snowing out here in Hagerstown, what you could do, if you're going down a hill, you can simply just downshift using the paddle shifters rather than actually hitting the brakes or risk sliding off the road. So they are good for that reason as well. So ultimately plenty of an acceleration overall for this thing. But anyways, to go along with that acceleration as always, braking is equally important. And so up front, you will find 13.5 inch ventilated front discs in the back, 12.6 inch solid rear discs. As far as that braking feel goes, it's soft. <laughs> it's on the softer side of things, no doubt. But again, this isn't a performance car, so I didn't expect it to be a super firm braking feel. So it'll certainly get the job done for the GLC. Then touching on suspension and handling, you will find a four-wheel independent suspension with the multi-link design coming standard. And my very favorite part, an adaptive damping suspension comes standard on the GLC 300 as well. That's something I didn't necessarily expect because it isn't always the case in the competition. So what an adaptive damping suspension is, it's gonna monitor each shock absorber individually, not only adjusting to the road imperfections, giving you a smoother ride, but it's also gonna tighten up that suspension during heavy cornering, giving you better handling as well. So overall, it gives you the best of both worlds, which you're really gonna tell the difference is the ride quality. It gives you so much smoother of a ride quality compared to an SUV that does not have an adaptive damping suspension. And I can attest to that in my short little test drive here today, the ride quality has been 100% on point, as you would expect from Mercedes Benz, but as you will always get from an adaptive damping suspension. So I did wanna mention that. And as I still have it in sport driving mode, it is a much heavier steering feel. So I absolutely love that. Let me go ahead and take it out, put it back in comfort. 
It does loosen up a little bit, but still a little bit on the heavier side of things. So as far as the steering feel goes in the GLC, I absolutely love it. And the 10 and two grips are definitely on the thicker side as well. So huge fan of that. And as far as cabin noise goes, even with our massive panoramic moonroof that we have in this one today, as far as wind noise goes, it's 100% at bay and even road noise, like it's all perfectly fine. And sometimes you do get a good bit of wind noise with these panoramic moonroofs, but that is not the case in the GLC. So again, well done Mercedes. Touching on rear visibility, looking out my rear view mirror here, I can see perfectly fine out the back. So 100% not gonna have any issues there. And another big plus here is rain sensing windshield wipers do come standard on the GLC 300. So whenever this thing detects any kind of mist or rainfall, it's gonna automatically turn on those windshield wipers for it, just kind of like automatic headlights. So I do love that as well. But that pretty much rounds out the performance segment of this review, you guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2024 Mercedes-Benz GLC 300. All right, so here she is, you guys, the new 2024 Mercedes-Benz GLC 300 finished in Starling Blue Metallic, which, by the way, is a $750 paint option in case you were curious. I think it looks absolutely amazing. But as always, let's go ahead and start where this one is made. Taking a look at the VIN, first character is the letter W, indicating that the new GLC 300 is built and assembled in Germany, as it should be. But let's go ahead and start up front on this one. Single horizontal bar on that front grille does come standard. LED headlights with LED daytime running lights coming standard along with the automatic feature and automatic high beams. So if you have your high beams on at night and it senses a vehicle coming in the opposite direction, it's gonna automatically dim them back to low beams. And when that vehicle is gone, it's gonna automatically bounce it back up to high beams for you there. So definitely very convenient. Chrome accents found on the lower portion of that front bumper as well. And I did wanna also mention there is an AMG line package that goes for $3,450. And that essentially gives you gloss black accents and a diamond block front grille rather than the black horizontal bars that we have on this one here today. But anyways, that pretty much rounds out the front end. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the side. All right, so now since we are around to the side of the GLC, roof rails do come standard, of course. They are finished in aluminum up top there. Chrome or gloss black window surrounds dependent upon the configuration that you go with. Same thing for the mirrors. They are body colored or gloss black dependent upon the configuration. They will be power adjustable with LED integrated turret signals. They will also be heated and power folding as well. So when you lo lock this one up, they are going to fold in. When you unlock it, they're gonna fold back out for you there. I do like the chrome accents found on the door handles there. That definitely looks good. And then take a look down at the wheel setup. 18 inch aluminum alloys do come standard, but then 19 inch and 20 inch designs are available in case you were curious but that pretty much rounds out the side profile let's now go ahead and make our way to the back all right so but now since we are around to the back of the glc first thing i want to mention is traditionally you will find a body colored shark fin antenna on the top of most vehicles out there like 90 percent of them but with mercedes benz that is definitely not the case a much more aerodynamic look a much more cleaner look in my personal opinion but rear spoiler with an integrated brake light just below that rear window wiper of course led tail lights coming standard for added illumination at night you do have some subscribe and like the video lettering found on the back not really but go ahead and smash the subscribe button i have been doing this for nine years now filming new car reviews so if you're into new car reviews yeah, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. But just below it all, you're gonna find some chrome accents found on the lower portion of that rear bumper or gloss black if you go with the AMG line package, of course. But integrated dual exhaust outlets with chrome tips, they definitely look good. So having said that, I do believe you guys know what we have to do next is always here is that exhaust clip. All right, so now since we are around to the back of the GLC, when it comes to opening that rear tailgate, a power tailgate does come standard for any and all configurations across the board. So you gotta love that. There is a button on the key fob. There's also, of course, a button on the tailgate itself as well. But once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 21.9 cubic feet. If that was not enough space, there is a 40-20-40 split, meaning the rear seats do fold down quite flat, bumping that up to 59.3 cubic feet. And there actually were some buttons in the cargo area that made folding down those rear seats extremely easy as well but grocery bag hooks do come standard cargo lighting of course there are tie down anchors there is a cargo cover actually some nice netted storage found in the back left corner there's actually some elastic storage found on the right side in the back as well and then if you were to lift up underneath of that cargo floor you are going to find a spare tire which i always personally prefer as opposed to the fix of flat so then making our way up to the rear legroom that is going to come in at 37.4 inches for reference i mean even six feet tall this is how much space i had in the back seats there 
Rear center armrest with a phone holder does come standard. Rear ventilation coming standard as well. And there is a little bit of storage underneath of that rear ventilation. However, I did not happen to find any charging ports, unfortunately. But anyways, then making our way up to the front seats, power adjustable front seats with memory settings for up to three different drivers. And they're actually on the passenger side as well. So the passenger seat is also memory adjustable for three different passengers. So that's pretty cool. Heated front seats coming standard. Ventilated front seats are going to be optional. And all of the power adjustable buttons are located on the doors in typical Mercedes fashion. So overall, seating was plenty adjustable. I was able to find my perfect driving position. So absolutely no issues there. And then take a look at the steering wheel. As I said previously, the 10 and 2 grips are massive. It is tilt and telescoping. It is power adjustable. And it is leather wrapped as well so absolutely no issues with the steering wheel then make our way to the startup let me start by showing you guys the key here all of your buttons are on one side of the key you got the lock button which is the mercedes logo just underneath of that unlock and then the button to pop the power tailgate there but it is all keyless entry with a push button start so all i am going to do here is simply put my foot of the brake and press that engine start button located just to the left of the infotainment screen and so once started up 12.3 inch digital gauge cluster does come standard and since it's digital yes it is extremely customizable and so if you hit the little home icon on the left side of the steering wheel it gives you a bunch of different looks like understated sport classic you got the full navigation setup and uh off-road mode actually as well so a lot of really fun looks to the gauges dependent upon what you're going for i think the sport looks good i think the navigation setup is always nice as well and i'm surprised that they have that off-road mode as well but overall you can just choose to simply display a classic look which gives you tachometer speedometer digital speedometer and of course it's always going to tell you your outside temperature and how many miles you have left until you hit empty so overall i always say this with mercedes they do an absolutely amazing job with their digital gauge clusters and that is certainly the case in the glc 300 but now let's go ahead and make our way to overall interior quality a dual pane panoramic moonroof comes standard and like i said there wasn't any cabin noise coming in through it so i do like that the passengers have a view of the sky as well there Garage door openers on the frameless rear view mirror also come standard for up to three different garage doors. There's plenty of wood trims available and I like it because it's kind of like a matte wood trim and it is texturized as well. So it has a nice feel to it just above the passenger side glove box surrounding the engine start button as well there. You do have dual cup holders uh, front and center here. You got a wireless phone charger in there. You got a USB charging port as well. And then within the center armrest, actually a decent amount of space. It looks like there's some LED lighting within there as well. That's pretty cool and a couple USB charging ports yet again. But I think my favorite part about the interior quality has got to be the ambient lighting. They did a wonderful job with that. It is very bright, very vibrant, and there's 64 colors available as well. There's two-toned colors available or like kind of a fadish two-tone colors. And then there's just monotone colors as well. So I put it on like a purplish blue to kind of match up with our exterior. I probably could have put it on a, a just straight blue, but I don't know. I kind of like the purplish blue look, but anyways, ambient lighting is 100% amazing but now let's go ahead and take a look at the infotainment screen here and so this is an 11.9 inch portrait style color touchscreen display it comes with bluetooth and audio streaming android auto apple carplay of course you're looking at factory navigation system up there as well you can adjust your climate control settings up there so that's pretty cool along with your ambient lighting settings like i was just mentioning and your radio information and so Burmester 3D surround sound system does come standard on this one. So that is the one we have, obviously. Let's go ahead and turn on the radio, see what we got playing today, and let's test out the clarity of this one. Actually, that wasn't bad at all. Plenty of bass, plenty of clarity, as you would expect. And the cool thing is, you also have aluminum speaker covers all over the place, so that was pretty nice as well. And another cool thing is, the way to actually turn up and down the radio, you just simply slide your finger either up and down on the steering wheel or left and right just below the infotainment screen. So that's super easy. If you don't like that, though, you can just simply press in and it turns it up slightly at a time. But still, a lot of fun ways to adjust the volume there. And like I said, sound system was plenty fine there. But last thing I want to mention to you guys on the infotainment screen at least is when you do put the glc in reverse you will find a rear view camera coming standard across the board the 360 degree monitor there to the left that is going to be optional we do have that option giving you that bird's eye view which is always is going to lead us into safety and so front side side curtain airbags do come standard driver's knee airbag up front as well in the back you're going to have latch aka lower anchors to tether your children for the rear car seats rear child door locks tire pressure monitoring system but also coming standard a collision mitigation braking system driver attention monitoring system 
Parktronic with Active Park Assist, Active Brake Assist with Autonomous Emergency Braking, Blind Spot Assist, and the Mercedes-Benz Emergency Call Service. That last one is pretty cool. So if you were to have an accident where the airbags deploy, the car is actually automatically going to call you and ask you if you need an ambulance or police or anything like that. So that is definitely a very nice safety feature. So overall, when it comes to my final thoughts here of the GLC, great interior quality, especially the ambient lighting. So I absolutely love that. And I haven't mentioned it yet, but you do get a four year, 50,000 mile bumper to bumper warranty, which is above average, of course. Traditionally, you get three years, 36 on most other manufacturers. So that's pretty cool as well. The park assist, I didn't mention it yet, but the park assist is amazing on any Mercedes Benz. You can essentially tell it where to park and whether you want it to pull in or back and it's going to automatically do all that for you so that is pretty cool as well i love the ride quality i love the lack of cab noise within the cabin that was amazing as well as far as room for improvement goes the braking feel was a little bit too soft for me that could be different for everybody of course it's just my personal preference so wouldn't have minded if they firmed that up a little bit as they do on their amg cars and this thing can get pretty expensive pretty quick because there are so many different options on the plus side of that you can't really make it your own, but on the negative side of that, that base price can go up pretty good bit pretty quick. I'm just saying, but that is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen if you wanna see what's coming next on the channel before it gets to YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're in new car reviews, because that is what we do here on this channel. After all, do appreciate you guys watching more than you know, and I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold.